Hey, 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 what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Uh, for those of you who does snow removal, you know how much of a pain in the ass is to do clear sidewalks. I mean, snow removal like snow removal, you know, the truck plowing and whatnot, that's the easy job. But snow removal on sidewalks, that's a totally different game. So, uh, I kind of had it with this and I had this idea in mind for a lot of years to build a sidewalk snow removal machine. I've been to some places, uh, I've seen some new ones, they have some versions out there, they are wheeled and I don't want a wheeled one because I know the I'm not going to have traction. I used to use a small skid steer and uh, I had that problem and it's just a complete mess. So from the beginning, from the get-go, I knew I want a track machine and it had to be narrow enough to fit on the sidewalks so it won't do damage on the sides of the sidewalks. So I needed something that was under 36 inches on the outside of the tracks. Also, it had to have hydraulic controls. Um, in my case, this machine is gonna be retrofitted with a John Deere hydraulic blade so i needed a control a way to control the up and down of the blade and a way to control the angle of the blade now you, i'm probably could get away with just up and down and just have the blade pinned manually in one position but i wanted to be able to control that for some reason or another i don't know i just wanted to have it so uh after a lot of searches i came up with this machine in front of me here this is a Toro TRX-20 trencher. So it's a track machine. Uh, it's got all the basic controls that you need to move forward and backwards and do all the turns and whatnot. You have a control for uh, moving the trencher arm up and down, which I'm gonna be using to move my um, snow blade up and down. And the control for the chain of the trencher I'm going to be using to angle the blade left and right. This is how the trencher looks like. It's got this arm right here, the hydraulic motor that turns the chain. This is the hydraulic cylinder that lifts the arm up and down. These are the tracks. The tracks are identical on both sides of the machine. This specific machine has a 18 horsepower Kawasaki engine in it. It's got electric start. These are the controls. You got your gas, then you have your choke. This is the control for the motor of the chain. These are the controls for the machine where you go just by squeezing it forward, you go forward. If you squeeze it forward, then you actually tilt it. You're gonna go into that direction of the tilt same way backwards you squeeze it towards the center uh, post and you can turn it left and right in the same time it'll give you the direction of the turn here you'll have a uh, control for lifting the arm up and down gas tank this is how the other side of the machine looks like the tracks on this machine are a little worn out i'm not worried about that right now i just want to get the machine working first and then i will go from there so this is the overall look of the machine this is what i'm starting with and uh, i'm going to start by removing this trencher arm and then uh, building a whole new arm that attaches to the machine over there is connected to the hydraulic cylinder and the whole new arm is going to have i don't know actually yet if it's going to have a quick connect or not to the blade the reason being is Let's say in the future I want to drop the blade quick and put a broom, a hydraulic broom, or I want to put a snowblower, hydraulic snowblower, and attach it to the machine, to the main machine that's going to drive it. Uh, I don't know, it's just a thought. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Here's the machine the day I got it, and before I even started the project, I wanted to do a few checks. So what I did here, uh, this machine is a walk-behind machine. 
is not meant to ride on it so I'm gonna convert it into a ride on machine so first thing I wanted to check is um, I made a platform out of some scrap 2x4s and I wanted to check at uh, which rate of speed the machine moves kind of forward and reverse uh, that was uh, half a throttle now I'm giving it full throttle and um, I'm just checking to see how fast it can move uh, forward and reverse uh, and I realized that the reverse speed is a little slow but there are some adjustments that I can make so I'm gonna work on that later on also I wanted to check the functionality of the hydraulic controls make sure that they all work the way they should be so here I'm checking uh, how the hydraulic contour works for the arm itself up and down and also the hydraulic control for the chain and it looks like everything works um, as it should be and uh, I was getting ready to start the project I'm gonna start by removing this uh, rubber guard from here Next I'm gonna try to take this connections to the hydraulic motor out without making too much of a mess. Hmm, let's see how that goes. Put uh, one of these uh, wheel dollies underneath the trencher arm. And now I'm gonna remove the screw holding the arm to the machine. And also I have to remove the pin of the hydraulic cylinder that holds the arm. So I got the pin out and you can see how worn out there is right here where the bushing is it's probably chewed up about an eighth of an inch Whew. yeah so i definitely need a new pin in there so i was able to get this arm uh, removed off of the machine and now i'm gonna measure the size of the pin and the size of this bushing I gotta make here. Okay, so let's see what they are. First size of the pin is 0.98, so one inch pin. The size of the hole here. This one is 660. So this will be a 5 8 bolt. And then I gotta check here the width of the hydraulic coupling here 0.40 for the new arm I'm going to be using this uh, 5 inch square quarter inch wall tubing is gonna go right in there like that and then I will make a uh, an arm over here to connect the hydraulic cylinder to it I gotta make the bushing for over here where the pin goes, another bushing for over here where the this other pin goes. Cut this at 45 degrees, weld the other 90 degree piece, and that should be it. These are the bushings I made yesterday in the other shop. Uh, this is the big one, the 5.7 inches that's gonna go into the five inch square arm. And that's gonna have the pin through it. And then 
I made these two one inch ID bushings over here for the pin of the hydraulic cylinder. Perfect. I had a hard time cutting this uh, 5x5 at 45. Um, I tried cutting into my chop saw and it didn't fit there. So I had to go back to my uh, other shop and uh, cut it there in the band saw. Had to clean it up a little bit, chamfered it for the weld fill. And now I'm just checking it for square. It's pretty close, it's not perfect, about a 16th off, but that's good enough for what it's gonna do. I'm gonna start by removing this uh, <coughs> angle lock over here. I'm not gonna need this since I'm gonna put a hydraulic cylinder over here. And then cut some bits and pieces off so I can prep it for mounting the quick connect. This is a quarter inch mile steel plate. Uh, this is the plate I'm going to make the quick connect out of. And I decided on a width of 14 inches. 14 inches is a lot bigger than the size of the plow over there, but I don't know what I'm going to attach in the future. You know, I attach a snow blower or a salt spreader, and those attachments might have a wider connection point. So I decided on 14, and I think that's pretty much going to cover everything I'm going to do with this machine. So I'm going to do a 14 by an 8 by 8 and I'm going to add, add an, an extra inch and a half which I'm just going to score and fold over and then add two sides to it in the bottom and that's going to be the receiving plate. After beating the crap out of it for about 10 minutes, I kind of achieved what I wanted to achieve, that 45 degree bend on the plate. Uh, now I'm just going to do a reinforcement weld here on the in inside of it. So I've cut the other pieces that I need to make the matting piece of this receiver plate. It's pretty much I'm building another plate on top of the receiver plate. And then these pieces will go right here on the side. I'm going to use a uh, scraper card which is about a 16th as a spacer. So this will be easier to get in and out. Uh, and these will be welded on the outside. So the receiver plate will fit nice and easy snug on the inside of it. After all the hard work, let's see how these two plates connect to each other. So that's the plate that's going to be on the blade. This is the plate that's going to be on the arm. Perfect. And then now I'm going to drill two holes on each side of this and I'm gonna put some spring-loaded pins to lock it in place made a mistake I didn't realize that when you weld this uh, receiver plate on the side here and then the other plate comes over it, it runs right onto those welds. 
So um, it's good I only tack it. I gotta take this off. And I gotta find a different way of attaching this to the main arm. This is how the part looks like now with the angles welded in place. Oh, let me see if it slides right over the arm. Now let's see if everything lines up. This time... Perfect. The blade attached, that's how it moves. That's how it angles. Left. And right. Um, I'm going to have to chop this blade up shorter if you kind of draw an imaginary line from the outside of the tracks ends up right about where that uh, shoe is and that's about four inches from the end so I'm gonna chop about four inches from each end of the blade this way I'm gonna end up with about 40 inch blade and that's more than enough for what I need but I'm going to wrap it up for today uh, there'll be another video coming next week with some more progress on the machine if you guys enjoy this kind of content, uh, consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and uh, if you have any comments or questions, put them in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.